Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Migration, the podcast. Today I'm here with Nasir Nawaz, who is our CEO. Um, as you guys know from our last episode, my name is Nikki and I'm a student counsellor here. Um, and today we wanted to address some very key issues about New South Wales policy when it comes to the skilled visa. Okay, I think there's also um, one other change and it's like, so the government has updated their skilled employment criteria. So can you just tell me maybe a little bit about what this could involve and what we can look out for in terms of these updates or expect? Which appointment criteria? It's a skilled employment criteria. Oh. So the uh, New South Wales government has, they've been following uh, skill assessed or deemed as a professional level assessed by the assessing body. Now they say we'll be following the rule that uh, whatever the federal government is following, but they are also written it's uh, in between the lines, it's better to get it assessed because if employment is assessed by the assessing body, it gives more confidence to the assessor who is assessing your uh, gender skill migration application that it already has been assessed by authorized body, the assessing body itself. So I would say uh, better to get it assessed than to leave it this way that, oh, hey, uh, I will get it assessed by the case officer who is assessing my nomination application because I think it will mitigate the risk. Let's say uh, we, the applicant goes to the assessing body and assessing body says uh, maybe your work is not up to the mark or it's not professional level. Maybe uh, you could not provide the, the, all the relevant documents so we're not assessing your employment. Other way around, if the case officer assessing your nomination application, so the case officer says, well, uh, this is not up to the mark. Now you have already have maybe claimed the points for that. Mm -hmm. So at that point, your nomination is being refused versus your employment is uh, not assessed by the assessing body. So to mitigate the risk, I would say go for assessing body first and get it assessed in, instead of leaving at case officer's hand yeah. saying that. Because this is kind of irreparable loss if application is, assess, application is declined at the time of uh, nomination instead of at the time of assessing assessed assessment assessed by the skill assessing body okay. so yeah that's that that's my suggestion on this one is okay. they also say because it gives more confidence to the case officer who is assessing the nomination application um i guess my next question for you is that um okay so if you do i know there's a lot of applicants out there who feel pressured and who feel very stressed maybe waiting for the outcome you know like um sometimes when you are in a like a precarious situation, it's the one thing that you're depending on. Um, a lot of people's livelihoods depend on maybe this one nomination. Um, so can you just tell people before they even submit, before they do their next step, what are some common reasons they should avoid um, to have their, what, word? what are some common reasons for applications to be refused? And how can people avoid this? Uh, normally, the common reasons to refuse are overclaiming the points. It could be in context of employment or something else. What happens normally, let's say someone has uh, completed three years work offshore and possibly the applicant, obviously with the good intention, not the malicious one, has claimed the points of six months internship, two and a half year employment. And that internship may not be or was not even up to the mark. No, with the clear conscience, the applicant has claimed points, uh, offshore employment points, five points. Technically speaking, they were not five points because you are supposed to work three years offshore in order to claim those points. So normally it's uh, over points, over claiming the points, especially in context of employment, because in age you cannot overclaim. Age is age. Uh, in English proficiency, you cannot overclaim it because when you put that point, it's auto-generated. So 
I think, uh, and sometimes very important, sometimes the uh, qualification. I have seen instances where the degree, let's for argument say, someone studied four years degree offshore and it was engineering degree in his eye or context. But when the skill assessing body assessed it as an engineering technologist, possibly, and the qualification was assessed as an associate degree instead of the bachelor's degree. Now, the associate degree has 10 points. Bachelor's has 15 points. So maybe uh, by mistake, he, uh, the applicant did not uh, read that through yeah. and thought that, oh, I'm an unique technologist and my degree is bachelor. So by claiming those points, it could be overclaimed points. So these are two clear examples where they mistakenly can overclaim the points, which unfortunately the application is doomed to fail anyway. So that's these are the common reason I can think of. Yeah, and that's why I think handling applications on your own can be quite tricky because sometimes you may not assume the right things about what you're selecting. Yeah, it, it could be yeah, quite tricky sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay, um, then my next question to you is, so there are three um, criteria for expedited assessment. Can you talk us through what those three criteria are? Uh, there are different criteria to get expedited your nomination application by the state. Uh, they have clearly written those. Uh, they say if in five working days, coming five working days, your visa or your partner visa is expiring, your skill assessment or your English requirement or test is expiring, or maybe the passport, your passport or your partner's passport is being ex is expiring in coming five working days, please let us know. We can expedite the nomination application. It doesn't mean they will give positive or negative outcome, but it means the state can expedite the uh, nomination process uh, other than that, I don't think so. They will expedite the process because people try to shoot them the emails or uh, maybe hit their inbox and they don't bother. So, because look, we're talking about new source fares, state is very competitive. Many applicants come from, uh, they apply from all over the world. So, they just want to follow the strict rules. And that's where they have also published that. Only these factors we consider, uh, and they are, I think, considering only for onshore applicants. So I think so. They haven't written it there because when you talk about the visa application, you know, that's where they can expedite the process. Or maybe someone is oh, losing, oh, another thing. Maybe someone uh, is losing points uh, because of the age, and not those points will come under 65, that's where they can expedite the process for the nomination of the application. Yeah. yeah. And obviously, that doesn't mean that you do last-minute application and do of it course. just before your visa expires. Just, just to get it expedited. Just to get it expedited. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. That makes sense. I think these are. it's good that we're talking about this and we're making it very clear to everybody um, because sometimes you, know, you overlook these little things and it adds up. Okay, so I'm going to ask you... Um, the final question before we end the part one of our little podcast here. Um, what are the New South Wales skills list? Uh, New South Wales normally, many many uh, states, they uh, issue their own skill list based on the demand of that occupation in their own state. So New South Wales has issued the list. But if we compare with the other states, uh, New South Wales has uh, published the list in groups instead of the occupation itself. Let's for arguments, because there is N school code for every occupation, and these are six-digit codes. For group, first four digits are the group of that occupation. Now, they have published a separate list for the 190 in groups and separate list for 491 in groups. But they also say that, look, uh, let's say someone is in that occupation and not, ne not that group, not necessarily 
we are inviting uh, we can invite all those occupation in that group let me put forward an example let's say there is a group of the occupation but that occupation carries a uh, group that group carries the occupation that is in medium to long term skill list medium a uh, uh, short term skill occupation list and regional occupation list let's for argument say that group is in 190 list but in that group there is one of the occupations that is only in rol list now the technically speaking that occupation cannot be invited in 190 so it means they have written it there we have published the groups but not necessarily we will be inviting all occupation in that same group because that may be an RL list. Mm -hmm. RL means that occupation can only be invited in 491 mm -hmm. and this is law by the federal government. Okay. So we must consider that as well. So that's, uh, that's what they have published and also they say uh, we have paid this list carefully based on the demand and supply and demand is for these groups. No, not necessarily they will be inviting all those occupations yeah. because they may have limited number of seats. Mm -hmm. So they say, as our state is highly competitive, you should be considering other, other options as well. Mm -hmm. So that's what their list is. Is what you're saying is that um, the categories and the occupations that are listed is different for each visa? It's just different for the one... <laughs> No, the, the, the federal government has three lists for every occupation, I mean, like the, for the occupations actually. Yeah. One is medium to long term strategic skill list. Mm -hmm. So whatever occupation is there, mm -hmm. it can apply, it is eligible for our subclass 189, 190 and 491. Yeah. There is another list which is called SDSOL, short term skill occupation list. Wow, okay. That is a, a occupation listed in that occupation list is uh, is also only considered for 190 and 491. Okay. There is a third list that is called ROL list, regional occupation list. Mm -hmm. An occupation in that list is considered only for 491. It's not for 190, mm -hmm. not for 189. Now, what they have done, they have made the groups. Now, the group is derived from ABS, Australian Bureau of Statistics. So, the group has different occupations. Now, those occupation could be MTS, uh, medium to long term strategic skill list, or STSOL or RL. Let's, for argument's sake, that group has two or three kind of occupations. One occupation is only published in RL, so the state cannot nominate that occupation in one nine zero because it's not eligible for that subclass. That's correct. So it, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's very simplified, but yes, yeah, there's a bit of technique. There may be some overlap between the occupations, but at the end of the day, we should treat it in isolation. Like if you want yeah, um, a, that, like a regional one, like you have to just look at that list. Yes, that is, that's more or less. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. Correct. That's correct. Okay. I think I'm getting it. And I hope, I hope, <laughs> yeah, and I hope a lot of people out there also in my boat um, trying to understand and digest all this information because it's a lot to understand, but I think he's broken it down into very simple terms, which is very necessary for any everyday um, citizen or applicant that's out there. Um, but because it's a very, very long video, um, we've broken it into two parts. So Possibly three parts, oh, which, which I see, yeah, because it's, we're, trying to, we're trying to cover New South Wales policies here. Yeah. And... I mean, when you see it, you see, oh, maybe it's a short one. But when you start talking about it, yeah. it's actually longer. And it's, uh, I mean, someone needs to understand the whole part of it. So I think maybe we'll do more than one part. I don't know, two, three or four. I, just, I don't know about it yet. Mm -mm. Yeah, because, yeah, it's just, um, and I hope, like, I think everyone here can find it helpful as well as you're explaining this. Because even if you're reading it and you think you get it, like there's other contextual things that you haven't considered. Yeah, that's correct. And uh, meanwhile, when we make the other part, we can uh, wait for the comments from our viewers. Cause, yeah. 
Yeah, and and I'll try to answer those questions as well. Yeah, so you know, if you want your two seconds of fame, please comment, <laughs> and then maybe we'll say your name as well as the comment. Oh yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> so please comment down below what other questions you have for this podcast. If you want your two three seconds of fame, um, and yeah, I look forward to discussing this with you in the next episode. That's okay. Thank you. Bye.